some people may prefer to have a portable scoreboard and here we have a solution this is just an 8 inch Windows tablet it's very small very thin and it's very durable now I'm going to demonstrate how you run the ProScore Snooker and Billiard scoreboard on this little 8 inch Windows tablet here we have a Windows 10 operating system and it runs equally well on Windows 8, Windows 7, Windows Vista, XP, 2000 or even 98 but anyway um, here we are going to demonstrate how to operate the scoreboard with just this tablet on a touch screen so here we have a shortcut on the um, desktop with the scoreboard so you just click that one and it launches the ProScore scoreboard software okay, okay. Um, we will enter the snooker scoreboard and here you can pick the banners on the top left and top right corner and to put a name for the table and to tell the scoreboard how many red balls you are going to play on the table in the beginning and the best of frames once you verify those information and you will just click continue and on this page you tell the system the names of the players so we already have names here so I just click continue so here we have entered the scoreboard now since I don't have a mouse or a keyboard so everything will be done with my fingers if your touch, uh, if your tablet has um, has a pen or a stylus, you can use those to point to the screen and perform the same operation. So now this is frame number one, and we'll start the frame clock by touching the clock area. You see how the color changes on the clock, and now the clock is now running. So um, the first player breaks off and the game will continue. So to switch the player, we'll just touch the player area. So that's the player's box on the left and right. So depending on who's on the table, so you just touch those area. Now, if the f first ball is ported, which obviously is a red ball, um, you will click the red ball at the bottom to get the, a pawn for the player and let's say he put a color ball after that you will click Six. the corresponding ball that he ported so until he finished the break you switch to the next player and back again so back and forth until the next ball is ported Now let's say at some point in time during the frame this player made a foul shot so he's going to give pawns away so in order to um, add the foul pawns to his opponent what you would do is to click the pawns word here so I click that once and you see the bottom row is now changed to different letters because it's a foul shot so you will click the F word so the F button and you see now we are in foul mode so now you are going to tell the system what color ball he fouled or how many points he's going to give away so um, in this case let's say he is giving away six points so I'll touch the pink ball here and six point has just been added to his opponent while he retained the original 15 points break so this is how you do a foul pawn now let's say I'll do it one more time let's say player on the left he made a foul shot so I touch the pawns word click the F button 
and give points away. So let's say four points this time. So I touch the brown ball and four points will be added to his opponent. And now it's his opponent is now on the table. So let's say this person he decided to take a free ball. So in order to add a free ball pawns, you will click the pawns word and click the F word again for once. Now we are in foul mode, but if we touch the F button one more time, it becomes a free ball mode. So now I'm going, he's attempting a free ball, and if he succeeded in potting a free ball, he would get one point because there are still red balls on the table, so he would get one point. So to add the free ball pawn to the player, I'll touch the red ball at the bottom. So one pawn has been added to this player, and he will now carry on to play for a color ball. So you may ask why I have to do it um, when you can just click a red ball to add one pawn to the scoreboard. Why do I have to go all the way to the free ball mode to add that one pawn? So the answer is that you see there is the red ball count at the bottom. So we, are, we have 12 red balls remaining on the table. If you click that red ball, that ball count will be deducted by one. So, but if you go to the free ball mode and you click the red ball, this uh, ball count will not be deducted because the red ball um, because you were not actually putting a red ball when you were playing for a free ball. Do you see what I mean? So that's the difference. If you put a free ball, that ball count will not be reduced. So this is a very important distinction. So that's it. Um, so um, let's say the game carry on and at some point in time one of the player concedes because you know he hasn't got he's too far behind or something. So we will end the frame by assigning a winner. So to end this frame with a winner we will click the pawns word again and here we find the W button. So the W button is here and now to confirm that this is the end of frame and I'm not making a mistake coming to here I'll press the green ball. If I made a mistake coming to this screen I can still go back to the scoreboard by touching the exit button at the top at the bottom right corner but you can't see it from the camera but because it's very faint but you can do that if you made a mistake and the game will carry on. So let's end this frame anyway. So I'll go back to the pawns word and click the W button. And then to confirm, I click the green ball. And what happens is the scoreboard has been reset and one frame has been added to the winner of the previous frame. So you see here, player on the right, he got one frame and the scoreboard has been reset to zero. And now we are ready to start the second frame. To start the second frame, remember, it's a good practice to um, touch the clock area to start the clock. So the clock is running. But if you're just playing like a casual game with your friends and something like that, um, you don't even have to start the clock. You can just play by adding pawns and things like that. Now I'm going to tell you a bit more about the operation. There are a few more operations you might be interested to find out. So um, let's say I'm adding pawns. And now um, I made a mistake. Let's say I touched the brown, but in instead I should have added the blue ball. So I made a mistake by adding the wrong pawns. Um, so instead of four four pawns, I should have added five pawns. So I have to undo the error. So to undo this error, I have to go to the pawns word again. So I touch the pawns and look for the E button. 
so that's the error so I will undo this so I'll touch the E button and the scoreboard has been wound back one step so that's why I have five pawns here instead of nine pawns as in previously so now I, ha I can add the correct pawns to this player so I'll touch the blue ball and now I have the correct score count so this is how you undo a mistake um, another thing I like to tell you is that uh, you don't have to add pawns for every single shot so if you add pawns after every single pot is not your cup of coffee um, then you may consider adding the total brick pawns when that brick is finished and to do that you just let this player you know um, pot all the balls and finish the brick and then you add the total pawns on the scoreboard so now let's say um, player on the right he made a brick of 24 so how do we add 24 pawns onto the scoreboard in one go um, remember you can just touch the brick wood <laughs> that's the brick wood you touch it it gives you a little keypad and you can enter the total number of pawns by using this keypad which is uh, 24 2 4 and add brick so to enter or to add the brick you touch that add brick button here so you see 24 pawns has been added in one go it's very convenient if you are not playing like a major tour tournament or, or competition this is pretty handy